Hi guys, this is John here. Continuing session number four. In today's lecture, we will look at a more challenging lab, which is about classification. Now, if you remember in the previous lab session, we looked at a basic example of how to identify the iris flower type. And there we had just four parameters. If you remember, which was sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Now we will look at a more complex example, which is a more real life example where we will identify the type of wheat grain. Now the important points that we will learn in this lab is data matters. Second, the quantity of data matters and third the quality of data matters so these are the three major outcomes that we will learn in this lab by looking at this practical example which is the wheat grain type so let's get started now essentially there are three types of wheat one is karma the other is called rosa and the third is called canadian now you can Google this and check it out. So you might ask me, John, how do we know whether if it's Kama, Rosa or Canadian? Well, there are a set of parameters that help us identify whether it is one of these three types, whether it's the area, the perimeter, the compactness, the length of the kernel. I will explain to you what we mean by kernel. There is something called as an asymmetry coefficient, which I'll explain to you. And the length of the kernel groove, as I told you, this example will be a little more complex. The reason why it's complex is because it is a real life example. So we will have to understand this patiently. So let us look at what do we mean by these parameters. First, this grain of wheat, what we call as a grain, technically it is called as a kernel. So this is called as a kernel of wheat, which we also called as a grain. So the area of the kernel is the area of this image, the total area. So this is the area. The perimeter is the total distance around the kernel. The length of the kernel, as we can clearly see, and the width of the kernel. So these are all parameters that we measure. Then this is called as the groove of the kernel this is called as the groove and the length of this is called as the length of the kernel groove then comes as the compactness this is a formula which we don't have to worry about which says 4 pi into area upon perimeter square so this is called as the compactness so we take the area A, we multiply it by 4 and pi, and we divide it by the perimeter square, P square, and that gives us the compactness. So we have looked at six parameters, which is the area, the perimeter, the length of the kernel, the width of the kernel, the length of the kernel groove, and last we saw the compactness, which was 4 pi a upon p square. Do not worry about this formula. We are not going into the math here. But I just wanted to explain to you how we get each of these parameters. And last but not least, we have something called as an asymmetry coefficient, which means that how much is this side bigger than this side? So if we have two sides, b and a, 
what is the size difference which means what is the asymmetry coefficient so the formula is very simple area of a minus area of b upon the total area a of your kernel so it is the left area minus the right area upon the total area so that is called as the asymmetry coefficient of your kernel so now you might be wondering john why are you telling me all this it's a fair question well basically when we measure all these parameters we are able to classify based on the area based on the perimeter the compactness the length of the kernel the width of the kernel the asymmetry coefficient and the length of the kernel groove we are able to identify the type of the kernel that we have so our first step is the problem statement what is the problem statement we need to predict the wheat type based on these parameters such as area perimeter asymmetry coefficient length of the kernel width of the kernel length of the kernel groove and compactness so based on all these parameters we are able to say what is the type of wheat kernel that we have and why is this important because when the scientists they sample the wheat the type of wheat plays a very important role in identifying this type okay so now let us go ahead and start working on this lab with the data set that we have so let's go ahead so from the previous lab if you remember we had six steps to finish in our lab we will be first uploading the data set we will be selecting the input and output parameters we will be splitting the test and train ratio if you remember we will be selecting the ai algorithm we will be generating the model and then we'll be testing the model and based on that we will be evaluating our results okay so let us go ahead and start our lab so you are familiar with our software interface so this is the tool that we were looking at so before i upload my data let me go ahead and show you what the data set looks like so we are in the wheat data set folder that you must have downloaded and i am double clicking on the wheat kernel data set here so this is what my data set looks like it has a total of 208 data points although this shows 209 it starts from 2 so we have a total of 208 data points which are structured so you can go through this data set and the columns that we have are area perimeter compactness length of kernel width of kernel asymmetry coefficient and length of kernel groove okay so we have these parameters let us go ahead and run this data set with our ai tool so i'll say select file i will go to my wheat data set and click on wheat kernel data set click on open it's asking me that the file is being used by another process if you remember the mistake i made in the previous lecture what we need to do we need to close the kernel data set in excel it says don't save say okay let's go ahead and select it again we say wheat kernel data set say open so now that was step number 1 in step number 2 we need to select the input and output 
So let us go ahead and click on the inputs, which is area, perimeter, compactness, length of kernel, width of kernel, asymmetry coefficient, length of kernel groove, and our output will be our wheat type. Now I'm going to leave the test and train ratio fine for now, but I would encourage you to vary this and see the impact on accuracy. Now let us go ahead and click on the decision tree classifier and say run. The reason why I'm running the decision tree classifier is because in the free version of the software, this is what we have provided. But if you have the premium version, you will run this data across all three algorithms and you will note and tell me what the accuracy is across these algorithms and tell me which is the best algorithm that we have. So I'm just going to run this for now and click on run. So if you recollect from lab one, we have to tell the machine what steps it needs to do. So we will go ahead and click on step number one, which is initializing the data. Once we finish initializing, then we will start analyzing the data. When I say we, it's the machine that is analyzing the data. Then I will ask my machine to start training itself using the decision tree classifier. And this will be using the 80% data that I had spoken about. And what the machine does is it takes 80% of the 208 data points. If you remember, we had 208 data points. It takes 80% of that and trains itself. And then it takes the remaining 20% of the 208 data points and it tests itself. So it's going to test itself. And once it is complete, it will then ask you to generate the result. So we click on generate the result. So this is what the confusion matrix looks like. If you remember with an accuracy of 92.86, so one quick exercise I want you guys to try. If you total all the entries here, you should get a number which is 20% of your total data set size. So what was our data set size? 208. So we had 208 data points and we tested our algorithm using 20% of that, which should be roughly 42 it'll be 41.6, which is 42. So if you go ahead and look at your tool, this should be 26, 39, 41, and 42. So this works. I just wanted you to verify that. So now with an accuracy of 92.86, what I want you to try is we test the model. Now let's go to our dataset folder and select the wheat output Excel sheet. And we have selected these 10 parameters and let's go ahead and test our machine as we have done before. So I am just going to show you some basic tests here because this step will take quite some time, but I want you to try this because you will be able to see whether your machine is predicting correctly or not. So I will show you one round. The reason is because I want to teach you the other parts of the data set. So what I'm effectively doing is I am just copy pasting this here. Copy, paste. Okay, so we have entered all these values here. Let's go ahead and click on predict. And we have comma, which is true. Let's go ahead and quickly enter another set of values here. Copy, paste, copy, paste.
Christ. So when I click on predict again, I get Rosa, which is expected. So I got Rosa. So this is predicting fine. Now what I want you guys to try is, I want you to go through all these values and I want you to enter a column called as predicted one, or I will say predicted 100 means we have all the data here. And I would like you to write whether it was right or wrong, whether the prediction was right or wrong. So my first prediction was right and my second prediction was right. I would like you to go ahead and test for all these values and, and enter the results here. I am skipping this for now, but as students, I am expecting you to complete this exercise and see how your machine has performed. So now what we will do is I will go back and I will show you one simple point how data impacts accuracy. Remember this point that data impacts accuracy. So now that you have completed this exercise and I'm sure you will enter these values here. In the next lecture, I will show you a very important concept of how data will impact the accuracy of my algorithm and of my machine. So in this lecture, we have looked at an important example, which is the wheat kernel type. And I've explained to you the basics of that. We have entered these values in our machine. We have done the classification. We have seen the confusion matrix. And until now, I'm sure you know how to read this confusion matrix as well. So I hope this lecture was clear. In the next lecture, we will continue with this lab and we will see how data impacts accuracy. That will be the main concept of the next lab. I hope this lecture was clear. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.